All right. Hello, everybody. My name's Aaron. I'm going to be showing you how to create a stretchy system. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, it's all node based. We're going to be working a lot in the hypergraph, or hypershade, I'm sorry. So that's going to be this, right? You know, it's, pretty, um, it's really useful. Um, it, uh, it's, I, li I personally like it. Um, it's not always going to be the best answer when you want to do stretchy, but it is a pretty cool way to go about it. So let's get started. All right. So first thing first, I'm gonna set up this uh, this leg as an IK as an IK leg. I'm gonna call it my leg for now. Um, this system does work best as IK because uh, it's just how it works. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's get out of here. So first thing first, I'm gonna set up an IK handle tool. So select first, last, hooray. Naming is everything, make sure you name it. So I'm gonna select that. And then since you don't really want to ever work on an IK handle, they just it's just not a good thing to do because you can't zero them out and then so if you mess up, you messed up. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a control for that. So I'm gonna create a circle, which I'm gonna name test icon. Perfect. And then we're gonna go ahead and parent this guy under there. Hooray, see, and then if I move this guy around, everything is beautiful. Actually, hang on, let me fix that real quick. Perfect, I'm going to freeze transforms, make sure it's zeroed out, delete the history. Perfect, all right, now it's perfect. Great. Yay, look at that. It's gorgeous. All right. So next thing is we're going to actually duplicate this joint chain, and we're going to re and delete the effector off of it because it's not actually going to do anything. We're going to select it. We're going to rename it as measure. What is this going to? This is going to act as a constant for us. It's not going to do anything. If I hide this right here, Control H. If I hide that right here and start moving this icon around, nothing is going to happen. It's literally just going to sit there and be pretty. So, we're going to do this. Alright, so now that I have all this set up, we're ready to go into the hypershade. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my measure joints, and I'm going to graph them. So we're going to add selected to the graph, and you see they pop up. Then I'm going to grab the icon. I'm going to do the same thing. Alright, make sure they're in this order. So next thing is we're actually going to go into our utilities tab down here. And we're going to grab a distance between node. So we're going to grab it here, put it there, and we're going to go into the attribute editor, and I'm going to rename it test db1. Beautiful. And we're going to duplicate it twice. So he's going to go here, he's going to go here, he's going to go here. So we're going to do like this. Doesn't really matter what order these are in, this is just for my own personal workflow. All right. So next thing, we're going to find the distance between this joint and this joint. So we're going to middle mouse drag and drop onto the distance between nodes, select other, and we're going to connect the world matrix to in matrix one, and then we're going to select the rotate pivot translate and put that to point one. Close, and then we're going to do the same thing for the rest of these joints. Translate. I need one more. Other. Where are you? Beautiful. Hello. Excellent. Excellent. Wonderful. So now we have our joint chain completely measured out. This has the distance between this joint, and this has the distance between this joint. All right. Next thing we need to know is how far the top joint is from the controller. So we're going to do that again. I'm going to go to world matrix, in matrix 1, rotate pivot translate, point 1, close you, same thing, other, world matrix, in matrix 2, rotate pivot translate, point 2. Beautiful thing. All right, next step is we have to find out the total distance of the leg. So to do that, we're going to be using an add double linear, which is literally going to take the value from here and here and add them together. So we're going to go here other distance input one 
here, here, other, distance, input to, close, and if I select here, you can see that we now have the distance from input one, so that's how far this leg is from this leg, and then this joint from this joint, so perfect. All right, next thing we need is a multiply divide node. This is going to be down here. All right, and just remember that these are all in alphabetical order, so if you ever get lost in the utilities tab, or the node tab for that matter, everything's in alphabetical order. So back to the lights, apparently. Utilities, all right. So I have my multiply divide node. I'm gonna rename this guy test MD1, perfect. MD stands for multiply divide node. All right, so we're gonna take this guy, little mouse drag and drop, I'm gonna go to other, Good distance, and we're gonna put him to input one x. Close that out. All right, I grab this guy, select him here. Other, I'm gonna go output to input two x. Close that up. All right, if I select this guy, you'll see that I have a smaller value on top and a bigger one on top, and a bigger one on bottom. Sorry. All right, this bottom is the total distance of the leg, like from each joint to each joint. That's how far they are. This is the top joint to the control, and that is. So that's the measurement of that. And if you notice that when, so we're going to go ahead and ch change the divide, change that the operation to divide. I'm sorry, I can't speak English for some reason. And then, so this is going to give us a value less than one, which will be important here in a minute. I'll explain that. All right, so we're going to, next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in a condition node. This is going to be our control box for the entire operation for the most part. All right, so we're going to grab the multiply divide node. Right here, I'm going to grab him, bring middle mouse, drag and drop, select other. We're going to go to output X, and that's going to go to the first term and color if false. All right, this is going to tell us when our stretchy is on or off. All right, so we're going to select the condition node. We're going to change the operation to less or equal. Lesser, uh, when it's less or equal to this value, um, the distance or the output of the multiply divide node, the stretchy will not activate. But when it goes over, the value of 1, which is what we're going to set the second term, and color of true. When it goes over that, the stretchy will activate, and you'll see that here in a second. So we're going to go ahead and grab the top two joints of our actual leg, and we're going to graph them, add them to the graph. All right, we're going to go here, select that, go to other, we're going to go out color, R, to scale, X. Close that. Same thing again. Other. Out color R to scale X. Thank you. Perfect. Alright, so now if we minimize this for a second, you see what we have here. You see our control. Now if I grab it and pull it, it stretches. Hooray! Science! Beautiful. All right. So if I go back in here, now is the fun part. We can make it. We can give a switch. So we're gonna move these out of the way. Actually, I'm just gonna delete these out for right now. Make sure I didn't do anything weird to it. No, perfect. All right. So now we're gonna bring in a blend color node. Put you right here. And we're gonna bring in another multiply divide node. This one. This is important. We're gonna name this guy test switch MD. I just like to do that for. Per, uh, identification purposes, we're going to change input 1 x to 1. We're going to leave the operation as multiply. This is very important because this is going to affect the value of the of the joint scale. All right, so we're going to take this, we're going to grab the condition node, and we're going to drag and drop other output color R, and that's going to go to color 1 R. All right, close that, and we're going to grab the, the new multiply divide node. Same thing, other, except we're going to attach the output X to color 2 R. Alright, so when I select this guy, you'll see that it's got a nice blend, and let's see what happens. Alright, so I'll select this guy, and if I slide in between them, nothing happens, because I haven't connected them yet. Oops, my bad. 
Alright, so let's try that again. Alright, so output R. It's going to go to scale. X, close. Output R. Scale. X. Perfect. Alright, so we're going to minimize this for the time being. And now, actually, we want that back. Come here. We're going to bring you over here. So when I bring this guy way over here, you notice how it's kind of stretching? But if I grab this and I switch between them, it's gonna it's gonna stretch. Or it's gonna not gonna stretch. And so what we can do is we can go to the circle. We can go just add an attribute. Just name it stretch. I'm gonna make it a zero to ten. Gonna go okay. Alright, we're going to grab this guy, and this guy, and we're going to create a set driven key. So window, where is the key? Anyway, we're going to create a set driven key. So, we go blend color, or this is going to be our driver, so dro load the driver. This is going to be our driven, so load the driven. Alright, so stretch, and then we're going to select the blender. Alright, so when test icon is at zero, the blender should be, that goes to R, so we're going to go to, zero, Let's see if that's the stretchy one, no, perfect, okay, so when blender is zero, stretch is going to be off, so key that, and then when stretch is 10, blender is to 1, key. Alright. Hooray. And then if you notice when I bring it back, it won't it won't actually stretch in on itself, it'll just bend. Alright. And the cool part about this particular system is if I put all of this so if I create a circle, a circle, and I make it really big, I freeze all the transformations and delete the history, and I parent all of this stuff under it, everything will stretch, or everything will scale, and it'll scale fine, and then the stretchy will actually still work. regardless of the scale of the circle. All right. So that's how you make a node-based stretchy system. Um, I'm going to make another tutorial on how to actually script this because it is scriptable and that will make the whole thing way faster. And yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Be happy to take suggestions for tutorials. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you.